Well, every year, uh, at least I think it's every year, yeah. uh, research analyst Gartner Incorporated announced their top 10 strategic technology trends. Top 10 strategic technology trends. Very well sped, I said, know. sped. Uh, uh, what they define a strategic technology trend uh, as one with a, a, a substantial disruptive potential that is just beginning to break out of uh, an emergency state, uh, an emergency, emerging state, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and into you know, broader use. They're all pretty interesting, and you can see them all if you follow the article link in the, in the player page, but there were a few I wanted to call out because they, they really kind of leapt out at me because I think they have probably the most uh, applicability to let's say manufacturing, a lot of an mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in industry that we cover a lot. So first up was artificial intelligence, or AI, and advanced machine learning. And this is the technology that allows machines to, um, uh, to learn, in essence, and these employ more than your traditional rule-based algorithms, you know, if this, then do that. And these are systems that really understand, learn, predict, adapt, and potentially operate autonomously. Now most of us are familiar with let's say self-driving cars which are supposedly supposed to kind of learn the more the more they're driven and uh, but even in our industry manufacturing we are seeing this technology used for collaborative robots or cobots as they are sometimes called. These are robots that actually learn on the fly by observing what humans do by working side by side with them. They actually monitor our motions and adapt to them. Uh, and there's a lot of work being done on this and you'll see more of this in the future. Number two in the top trends from Gartner intelligent things. Now this is <clears throat> really kind of an extension of the AI and advanced machine learning that I just mentioned, but this drills down into smaller, traditionally dumb devices, you know, connected devices, uh, you know, what we've been calling, let's say, the Internet of Things. Uh, so these are intelligent things that refer to, I'm sorry, intelligent things refer to these physical things that go beyond the execution of rigid programming models or, or behaviors and instead they deliver more advanced behavior and interact more naturally with their surroundings and, and with people. So think of the way uh, more and more apps on your smartphone interact with you and maybe tell you when, when you're driving down the road that, oh, by the way, you know, we know that you're interested in, you know, geeky technology, you know, gadgets, so there's a Best Buy coming up, mm -hmm. you know, this type of thing, right? So now as the proliferation of intelligent things such as drones and autonomous vehicles and smart appliances continue to grow, Gartner anticipates a shift from standalone intelligent things to collaborative intelligent mm -hmm. things. Think about that. All of your little smart devices talking to each other, you know, maybe your stove talking to your washing machine. Hey, you just spilled something on your shirt, you're gonna need to soak that. Yeah. Or your fridge, talking to your car. Mm -hmm. By the way, we happen to know that you're out of milk and right. there's a Safeway yeah, coming go, up, right? Go grab it, yeah. Yeah, so n number three in the top trends, virtual and augmented reality. And boy, are we seeing a lot going on with that, no even kidding. in manufacturing. Yeah. Immersive technologies such as virtual reality and augmented reality transform the way individuals interact with one another and with the software systems. We just saw a fantastic virtual reality system for training the other day. The demo we watched actually showed a person being trained to perform a physical task. In this case, it was changing tires on a car. He actually went through the motions mm -hmm. of changing changing tires, picking up the tire, picking up wrenches and the like, and was tracked and corrected on the fly as he changed the tires on a car that wasn't even there. It was really pretty darn funny to watch. I mean, this guy was going, he was picking up a tire, mm -hmm. you know, putting it on the car, you know, picking up a wrench, mm -hmm. putting the tires on as the software tracked him. What he saw through his goggles mm -hmm. was like he was actually doing this. If you actually watched him, it's like air mechanic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, it was really crazy. Yeah. But this is being used for training purposes. Yeah. Seen a lot of that. Finally, the digital twin. We've been hearing a lot about digital twins, and the term is used in a lot of ways, but in essence, it is simply the modeling uh, or overlay of an existing model of real world data. So you might have, let's say, a CAD model of an object, car engine, for instance. And sensors in the car engine, the actual car engine, report information on the engine back to that digital model in real time so that the digital model can now show what is really happening in the actual engine. So it's a, a digital twin of the engine, not just a, a 3D rendering. Gartner says that within uh, three to five years, 
Hundreds of millions of things will be represented by digital twins. Organizations are going to use these to proactively, proactively repair and plan for equipment service, to plan for manufacturing processes, you know, to operate factories or predict equipment failure. Uh, as such, digital twins will eventually become proxies for the combination of skilled individuals and traditional monitoring devices and controls. So if you want to read more all about these 10 tech trends, of which we've just covered four, you can click on the link underneath the player page below and uh, you know, kind of geek out to your heart's content. You know, what strikes me about that is this idea that, that technology and, and, and human interaction are coming together and are, and are not, you know, you've talked about this on the show in the past that, you know, in the, in the, in the past days, let's say, of robotics, there had to be a very much of a separation between robots working in areas right. discrete from people working in areas because it was dangerous for people to right. be around robots. But the, tech, the, 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 um, the, the technology now, the sensitivity of it now is such that they can coordinate and collaborate in real tight spaces. Yep. And there's not a danger anymore. Cobots. Cobots, which yep. really leads to a lot of interesting possibilities oh, yeah. for a lot yeah. of these. And we're going to actually, we're going to talk about uh, yeah. one of those uh, a little later on. Yeah, too. Cool, excellent, right. good stuff. Thanks, Derek.